Hi folks, welcome to the next edition of Serverless Crack. Uh, with myself, I'm Dave Anderson. I'm a technical fellow at Bizarre Voice, and author and contributor at the Serverless Edge. And Mark McCann, um, architect at Globalization Partners and author contributor at Serverless Edge. Michael O'Reilly, uh, architect with Globalization Partners and contributor with Serverless Edge. Hello. So first of all, the good news is that the book has been announced, The Flywheel Effect. Let's just get that in there first. Um, good fun, exciting couple of days. Um, but let's continue our discussion on the modern cloud. Uh, we've talked about um, what the modern cloud is, what it is for the, what's the as perspective of a CEO. What about from the perspective of a, a product leader, let's say? There are many different product job titles, so let's not go down that rabbit hole. Um, the product leader. So we're thinking about what are the things that product leader would expect from modern cloud? I think it's a good question. Um, what do you think? There's a couple of things we could put in there. I mean, for me, the first one is probably um, operational overhead. I think if you have a team you're building in modern cloud, there's less, I would say, lower level stuff to worry about. So there's maybe more capacity for other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like the, you know, like, and again, if we're talking about serverless and sort of teams that are operating in, say, a serverless kind of method, you know, and, and taking advantage of the modern cloud, operational overhead is kind of one of the main advantages you'll hear those teams talk about. Um, so a practical example of that might be that, you know, so for the existing projects we're working on at the minute, we tend not to kind of worry about um sort of how do we how are we going to scale our containers or we need like three months lead time to work out like our network architecture or whatever um because we've maybe you know we're a wee bit more rapid in how we'll maybe go out to market that we tend to go into a lot of the problems we're trying to solve and really engage and again i'm speaking from the perspective of an engineer working with a product person um or product lead but what are the problems we're trying to solve um you know, what's the quickest path to those problems and how do we effectively begin, you know, uh, getting stuff out to begin our, our, our experimentation. Um, but certainly, like, I'm not spending an awful lot of time worrying about, you know, spanning up four servers and, you know, and then having that influence overall kind of, you know, we got, because we're standing up the four servers, we got to be able to build this out full spec, you know, and, and veering away from sort of more traditional MVP. So I think, the operational overhead is definitely a big influencer and, and and I think it gives me more time to think about product and measurement and, you know, hitting targets and, and understanding the business problems. Yeah. So I think there's that definitely is, is one key facet. I think, I think that responsiveness is, is critical, right? Because the teams are set up to leverage modern cloud appropriately, they're much more aware of and much more responsible, responsive to the needs of you know, the product leads and product mm -hmm. leaders. Right, they're much more attuned to that because you know if you're not focused about you know passing your servers and scaling and network architecture and stuff your engineers are much more focused on well what is the actual need that i need to address here here are my users what are their needs you know how can i leverage that rapidly right so and, and you're you know you're much more you're part of the conversation i think a lot more so if you're a product leader you'll see your engineering teams they should be much more engaged with you know, the problems that you're facing or the the innovations that you're trying to achieve or the, you know, the, the issues you're trying to solve for your, for your customers. So I think from a, from a product sort of leader point of view in the modern cloud, you should be expecting your engineering teams to be much more responsive to your needs. And there should be a very good feedback loop there because you know, the time from idea to sort of validated feedback in production should be very short. You know, it could be you know, down to minutes if, if, if you've architected it and engineered it correctly. But the, the other thing I'd sort of clarify as well, it's it's the right type of operational overhead, you know what I mean? So I'll still advise teams that things like dashboards and getting the business view of your workload, but also getting the IT view of your workload is day zero type yeah. work, you know what I mean? So like work on your dashboards, work on the fact that you're going to need observability when you go out the prod because really you want to arm yourself with that information to effectively be able to make rapid decisions, stuff like that, you know? So it does change from that perspective. So there is still operational stuff that you do. It's just more aimed at, you know, 
product evolution and, and making good decisions with regards to what you're building. Um, so the teams are much better informed of you know, absolutely current state and future state and you know, um, yeah. I mean, one of the one of the things that you will have to kind of get the grips with with teams kind of moving in the modern cloud in this sort of space is the fact that. You know, you'll 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 meet teams who don't have dashboards or or whatever, and you're kind of going, "Yep, no, nope, let's go back." You should never negotiate on those sorts of things. Um, let's just spend our time doing this stuff. So, absolutely. Yeah, I think you know when we talk about you know setting up this way, you know, as a product leader, you shouldn't be overly concerned about you know scale or oh, what what happens if if we hit the sweet spot of product market fit and. Mm-hmm. You know, we get exponential sort of demand on our on our uh, product, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. You sh- if if you're leveraging modern cloud correctly, if you're following sort of well architected and service first, that shouldn't be your primary concern. You should be quite you know comfortable with that should scale globally to meet the needs of whatever your product is, right? And it shouldn't be you know something you need to think about six months in advance, right? So, and having that. CFD or that uh, mindset allows you to experiment much more rapidly, right? Allows yeah. you to get much more iterative in your sort of product approach. That, and again, that's one of the next things I guess we're moving into. You know, so if you've got that, you've got that apparatus, you can kind of see how they, how your workload is being received, how it's being used, how it's not being used, or why it's not being, you know, and it's not receiving the way you get. So you, you then have got to take action. So. You talk about sort of continuous improvement, continuous evolution, but again, that is your organization has got to be set up for that in relation. And this is what we talk about driving a culture of innovation. Uh, yep. You know, like so, you will constantly be evolving what you're doing to, you know, move towards your your business statement or your, you know, whatever purpose you've kind of set uh, out for your team or for your organization. So I think you know all the stuff we've talked about there, the observability. The rapid experimentation, the sort of bias for action, getting out into 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 those production environments, engaging with your customers, processing that feedback, using that feedback to then make the next decision, evolve it. So you'll probably find that you know you're moving into new areas or having conversations that you maybe wouldn't have had because you're so invested in previous sort of maybe setups. You know, it's the it's the sunk cost fallacy, you know, well, let's not move down that route because we still got all this stuff over here, you know, it's, it's going to work. Um, so I think that's the, that's the other major maybe thing for a product. It, 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 it definitely fosters genuine product development with product mindset, which is all really about embracing the culture of innovation, staying with your customers, moving with your customers or your users. Yeah. So. I think I think you'll see your product engineering teams will be much more engaged in those collaborative sort of workshops, those ideation and discovery workshops, and yeah. and if you're leveraging modern cloud appropriately, you'll have composable building blocks that your engineering teams can bring together to experiment and meet those needs in real, almost real time. So mm-hmm. you may be doing ideation sessions, discovery and framing type sessions. The engineering team will be able to stand up a prototype live as you're going through those sessions and give you some real sort of working code, working sort of solutions that you can um, validate if that's what you want, right? So that whole feedback loop is just the flywheel, it's just turning rapidly and, and you know, you're able to experiment at a pace that is unheard of, you know, so, you know, from a product leader, you should be seeing that speed. If you're not, if your teams aren't moving fast, if your engineering culture is not set up to move fast, you, know, you should be asking questions. Are, are we leveraging modern cloud appropriately um, in mm-hmm. our organization? And really, your your technology stack is letting you go fast and keep going fast because of that lower operational burden and that sort of that culture of innovation. We we say if you've modern cloud, you've there's space for innovation and that space to think about new technology, new ideas. Yeah. You know, there, there's a much more kind of creative environment there because your engineers aren't basically stuck you know, patching things and down in the weeds all day. So I think it's, it's, it's an interesting, um, that velocity is an interesting way to think about it, plus that kind of creativity. 100%. Yep. Very good. So that's the crack then. Um, uh, in, interesting stuff. Um, so we'll leave it at that then. We'll, we'll keep the, the conversation going on Modern Cloud um, next time. So uh, please come have a look at the uh, the, the blog at the, the serverlessedge.com and on Twitter at the Serverless Edge. And Pre-order the book, The Flywheel Effect, on Amazon and Barnes Nobles and all good bookshops. <laughs> Thanks very much. Awesome. Bye-bye. Everyone, bye.